Shalom. Shalom. Why would you invite me here? Me, the one responsible for his death. I am Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, and I am a Jew. I am a good Jew. Like all good Jews of my day, I know scripture. I know it forward, I know it backward, especially the first five books, what you call the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These books I know. I've committed them to memory. Have you? I also know the teachings of the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah, how they foretold the coming of a Savior. And I, like all good Jews of my day, I hoped. I prayed. Yes, Judas Iscariot prayed. Does that astonish you? I prayed the Son of Man would come during my lifetime. So when I heard of this rabbi, this Nazarene, who was teaching and preaching in ways that were different, I, Judas, I had to hear him. So I traveled to an area along the Sea of Tiberias. When I arrived, there were two, three hundred people there, all listening to this man. I went back a second, a third, a fourth time. Finally, I decided I must meet this man. And I remember I made my way through the crowd of people. When I came to Jesus, his back was to me. And I reached out my hand gently, gently, I tell you, I touched his shoulder. But he jolted. He jolted as if somehow I heard him. But then he turned. For the first time in my life, I'm looking into the eyes of Jesus. I'm looking into his eyes. I would that I could see those eyes this day. I said to him, Rabbi, I am Judas from Kiriath. Well, a look came over his face I can describe not. It was as if he was expecting me. But then he smiled. He smiled, he put his arm around me, he said, come with me, we went behind rocks. Do you know what we did, Jesus and me? For hours, we discussed scripture. One to one, we discussed scripture. I am an expert on scripture. You mention any verse, I can tell you exactly where to find it. You could start a verse, I could finish it for you. I know about scripture, but I learned something this day. I know where everything is in scripture, but Jesus, Jesus knew what it meant. Jesus knew what it meant. Well, he asked me to follow with he and the others. You call us apostles, is that right? Is that right? Did you hear what I said? Jesus asked me to be an apostle. He asked me to be an apostle, not a traitor, an apostle. And I knew that I was special to Jesus for two reasons. One, I'm the only apostle who's not from Galilee. I am from Judea. Second, I was given responsibility for the money, for the purse. Would you give your money to someone you did not trust? Would you give your money to someone you did not trust? Don't you see? Jesus trusted me. Jesus trusted me. Jesus loved me. Jesus loved me. Why do you hate me so much? Why do you hate me so much? We would travel from place to place where Jesus would preach. Many times we were laughed at. We were chased. People would spit at us. They would throw things. But I was willing to endure. I was willing to endure anything and everything for one reason. And that's because I knew who he was. Yes, I knew who he was. I know your book, your New Testament says it was Simon, that thick-headed fisherman that he knew. Is that right? Let me tell you, he might have been the first to say something. But I, Judas, I knew who he was. And because I knew scripture, I know what scripture says. Scripture says the son of man will suffer. But then it says the son of man will be glorified. So don't you see, I knew. If I were to suffer right there, right alongside Jesus, that when he was glorified, I'd be glorified. Don't you see? And there's no doubt in my mind as to who he was. After all, I was there. I, I saw as he performed miracles. I watched as he made the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. Once, once I was with him and two sisters, friends of Jesus, Mary and Martha, they came and they said that their brother Lazarus had taken ill and asked that Jesus please come. And, and some among us said, Jesus, do not listen to those women. Do not listen to those women. You cannot go back to Bethany. You can't go anywhere near Jerusalem. 
The last time you were there, they nearly stoned you to death. Don't listen to those women. Well, Thomas, he spoke up. And he said, do you hear yourselves? We tell this man we believe he's Messiah. If we truly believe that, we must be willing to suffer whatever the consequence, even if it means our death. Well, after two days, Jesus said, let us go. But when we arrived, it was too late. Lazarus was already dead and buried. Mary, Martha, they were in tears. And Jesus went to them and said, please take me to your brother. But they said to him, there is no reason. Why could you not have been here sooner? Had you only been here sooner, they said, our brother Lazarus would be alive. But Jesus said, no, no, please take me to him. So we all followed as Mary and Martha led us outside and then around back and then up to where the had the tomb, and we watched as Jesus went to the entrance of the tomb, raised his hands to heaven and his eyes to God. But then he commanded, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? Lazarus, who was dead and buried and in that tomb for many days, he walked out of the tomb. Don't you see he was dead and Jesus brought him back to life? Don't you see? I ran to him and said, Master, send us, each of us, to the ends of the earth. Let us tell people of what we have witnessed this day. But do you know what Jesus said to me? He said, no. He said, no, you will tell no one. He said, Judas, in my father's time, you will let my father's will be done. Well, let me tell you something. I knew that Jesus was wrong. Do you hear me? Jesus was wrong. He just brought a man back from the dead. It was time for him to stand up and tell the world, this is who I am. I am the one foretold. And the angels could come from heaven and rid the country of the Romans. Don't you see? Jesus had a responsibility. Don't you see? But I did exactly as I was told. I said nothing. I told no one. I was a good and faithful servant. Sometime later, we were having supper at the home of a friend of Jesus, Simon the Pharisee. A woman walked in, a street woman. She was filthy, dirty. Her hair was disheveled. She was, I don't know how she got into this house. And she walked straight to Jesus. And she dropped down to her knees and she began to cry. And there's tears rolled down across her filthy cheeks and onto his feet. She undid the hair from atop her head and she began to wipe the tears into his feet. And then she took a vial from around her neck. She broke it. The perfume, it went everywhere. And at that point, I'd had enough. I said, stop this. Stop this. Do you not know the value of that perfume? The value is 300 days wages. It should be taken, sold, and the money given to the poor. And then I turned to Jesus, and I said, Jesus, have you not been telling us that we're to care for the poor, to look after the poor? That perfume should have been taken, sold, and the money given to your precious poor. Jesus raised his hand to me and said, Judas, stop. Stop. He said, the poor you will have with you always. This woman, he said, is anointing me for my burial. Well, when he said that, I looked at him and I said, your what? Your burial. Now you listen to me, Jesus. I have not traveled with you for nearly three years for you to simply die and be buried. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? I know who you are. Don't you hear me? Don't you? Don't you see, Jesus did not know what he was supposed to do. He was prepared to die. He needed someone. He needed me. Don't you see? Don't you see? I knew that the Sanhedrin was looking for, Judas, for Jesus. I went and met with the leader, a man named Caiaphas. When I arrived, I said to him, I said, I, I, I understand you're, you're, you're looking for the Nazarene. And he said he was. I said, I, 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 I could take you to him when, when he'd be all but alone. Caiaphas said he'd like that. And then I looked him in the eyes and I said, Caiaphas, what do you want him for? And he said to me, he said, all we want to do is talk to him. That's what he said to me. All we want to do is talk to him. Don't you see? 
I believed if Jesus were brought before the Sanhedrin in question, he would answer their questions. They would see who he was. The angels would come from heaven. He'd be glorified, and I there by his side would be glorified. Don't you see? Don't you see? All I wanted was what was best for Jesus. Caiaphas handed me money, 30 pieces of silver, the price of a man. I said, I, I, said, I, don't, I don't want your money. Caiaphas, I don't, I'm not doing this for the money. I did not do this for the money. I did not do this for the money. Caiaphas said, you've earned it. You take the money. You don't want it. You can give it to the poor. So I took the money but I did not do it for the money. I left and met the others in a place you call the upper room for what is now called the Last Supper. And do you know what Jesus was doing when I arrived? He was over to the side. He was washing the feet of the others. And he looked, in my day, washing feet is reserved for the lowest of the low. Did you know that? That even a slave, if ordered by his master to wash his master's feet, that slave could refuse, and under our law, the slave could not be punished. And here was Jesus doing something that was for lower than a slave. And he looked up and he saw me. He said, Judas, come over. I want to wash your feet. And I went over to him. I sat down. He washed my feet. He washed my feet. Don't you see? That's his way of saying it's not too late, Judas. Judas. You can still change your mind. Later that night, we were reclining at table, and Jesus said that this night, someone here at table would betray him. Ten of the apostles said, Who is it, Lord? Uh, John said, Is it I, Lord? I asked, Who is it, Master? I know who he was, but I could not call him Lord. My guilt would not allow it. Jesus said, it is the one to whom I give this bread after dipping it into the sauce. And he took the bread, he raised it to heaven, he blessed it, he broke it. He dipped it into the sauce. And he handed it to me. He handed it to me, don't you see? He knew. He knew what I had done, he knew what I was going to do, and yet he washed my feet and he asked me to sit with him at table. That's how much he loved me. That's how much he loved me. He leaned over, said, Judas, you go do what you must do. You do it quickly. I remember I got up, I left. When I went out, the night was black. Never in my life do I remember a night more black. I went, I met with Caiaphas. When I arrived, I was surprised. He had 300 temple guards and they were armed. And I said, Caiaphas, what are you doing? I'm taking you to where Jesus is all but alone. You don't need 300 armed men. Caiaphas says, you've been paid. You will do as you're told. So I led 300 armed temple guards across the Valley of Gethsemane, up over the brook of Kidron, then up the side of the hill to the Garden of Gethsemane. When we arrived, do you know what Jesus was doing? Do you? He was just standing there. He was just standing there waiting. He could have gotten away. He could see us. He could see 300 temple guards with torches. If he didn't see, he could hear the sabers clashing. And he just stood there and waited. He could have gotten away. Why didn't you run? Why didn't you run and save me from myself? I told the master of the guard I would identify Jesus with a sign, a kiss. I walked up to Jesus. I put my arms around him. And I kissed him. <laughs> I kissed him as I have kissed no other. Because I love Jesus. I love Jesus. They pulled him away and took him off. That night I wandered through the streets of Jerusalem. I began to hear people say they're going to crucify him. They've arrested the Nazarene and they're going to crucify him. And I say, no, 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 no. I have it on good authority from Caiaphas himself. All they want to do is talk to him. 
But the more I argued, the more they began to shout, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Every face I'm looking at is shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Some of the very same people. One week earlier, we're, wa we're waving branches of palms, shouting, Hosanna to Jesus, praise to Jesus. We're now shouting, crucify him, you hypocrites. Every face is shouting, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. What had I done? And I found myself in front of the great temple. I took the 30 pieces of silver. I threw them onto the floor of the temple. But my head kept pounding, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And I found myself in a field, potter's field, standing next to a tree. And I took the rope from around my waist. And I hanged myself. Do you know what my sin is? Do you? My sin is not the betrayal of Jesus. That is not my sin. My sin is putting my will, my hopes, my goals, my dreams, my desires before the will of God. My sin is making what I wanted more important than what God wanted. I'm here this day for one reason, and that's to warn you, because there's a part of me in each and every one of you. And just as I fail, so too can you. To this very day, I can't even drop to my knees and say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. My pride gets in the way. Don't let your pride stand between you and God. Put God first in your life, and then your fate will not be the same as mine. Damned for all time. Shalom.